This is a pile of eBay crap, and this is a pile of Amazon crap. We have to deal with both of these today. We're just meeting, my name is Anthony, and I'm a professional reseller, I guess. I don't really feel pro, but it is how I make my full-time money while I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel right now. I really dread getting things ready for eBay, which is why this pile right here is all stuff that I need to list on eBay. That's just been sitting there for like a couple of weeks now. So I'm finally gonna get to listing it today, but I also have to drop all that stuff off at Amazon first and grab something for about $5 at Walmart that I think will help me to make a lot of money. And if you have any questions about anything that I'm doing throughout the video because you're interested in reselling or money or anything like that, leave it in the comments below and I'll definitely get to all of them. I also almost forgot I have like a ton of stuff that I need to return to Walmart and a couple other places because Amazon didn't let me sell it. 155823. Big time tip, if you have a bunch of boxes like me, definitely ask for the dolly from UPS. Hey, can I borrow your guys' dolly real quick? I will try not to. Hopefully that all sells and I'm about $2,000 richer. I always grab their receipts. I don't think I need them, but I always do for some reason. Dang, one, it says one of them was 28 pounds. I said it was 40, so I hope their scale was wrong. Otherwise I way overpay for my shipping. I've had like a bunch of each of these that I've already returned. I can't just like go and return everything all at once, especially when I have a massive quantity. I feel like I have to spread it out. Walmart doesn't care, it's a big corporation, but I feel kind of bad for the people that I'm returning stuff to. So I'm just gonna return a little bit of this today. I have a few things on a few different receipts. Yep, thank you, have a good one. I always feel bad doing multiple receipts just because I know that that can be a pain in the butt. Since we're at Walmart, you always gotta check out the clearance aisle though, no matter what you're buying. These are still too expensive. I'm waiting for the price to come down on those. And hopefully if no one buys them in a couple of weeks, they'll be at the right price because how Walmart does their clearance. I'm gonna check these real quick. I'm gonna check this. I've sold some of these before. It's open box, so I might sell this on eBay if I get it. Those aren't worth much. That needs to come down in price. That needs to come down in price. Those definitely need to come down in price. They weren't worth it. I didn't find the Yankee Candle stuff on Amazon or the Raptic Shield thing. Probably because it's not like one of the most popular smartphones. All right, this is what we are here for. Foam display board. Three of those. I might not need all of those, but I'm gonna grab them just in case. That was wrong, it's gonna be six bucks. One, five, five, eight, three, zero. Even if it's something as simple as like shipping or going to buy, just going to buy that poster board. If you're doing it for your business, make sure that you take the mileage because that's 56 cents a mile that you're gonna be able to write off come tax time. Definitely don't forget to do that. This type of box is probably one of the bigger things that I'm gonna be having to get pictures of. I don't think I'm gonna to need to make the little box that I'm gonna make much bigger than like this wide. But I am thinking about potentially making it something that I can take apart and put back together because I am a little bit limited on storage space. This and then that on either side. I cut slits here, here, and here, and then cut notches out of this. One, two, three, take those edges together, and then you can just fold it in on itself, and it will be flat, and just set it up. No, that makes too much sense. You're sleepy, and you're still smarter than me. That's not cool. Looks like we got two that are pretty nice, this one and this one. And this one is not so much, but since one of them is just gonna be on the sides and you're really not gonna see it much in the photos, all it has to do is bounce light onto our subject, which are gonna be the shoes or whatever we're shooting. We don't really need it to be super clean just because it just needs to reflect light. That was better than I expected it to go. The nice thing is that when you do that little pencil mark, since it's foam board, it actually makes a slight, slight groove. The razor kind of had a guide. So I have a pretty decent sized light, but I am gonna try with the small one that I have here. It was pretty good. Not crazy, but I'm gonna try some photos with nothing, just the natural light, then some with that, and then I'm gonna bring out my nice big soft box to see what the difference would be between all three of them. So I took a look at the photos, and honestly, I couldn't tell much of a difference. I'm looking at them now, and you can see them on the screen. So this is just the natural light, and honestly, like, they look pretty good. I'm not crazy about it, because there's still some, some pretty big shadows on them. And then these are with the small light. So honestly, the natural light kind of looks better, especially because I put the small light off to the side, so you can see the shadows kind of coming in at an angle. And then after that, 
that I set up my big soft box and it looks better. There's not as big of shadows even though I put it in the same location, but I don't know if it looks better than just the natural light. And this has the natural light with the soft box. And so after these photos, I actually closed the blinds so it was just like it was dark and I was taking it with the soft box. Do you have a little bit more of a shadow just because there's obviously not as much light coming in and I only have the one soft box on the one side. Then I took the photos where I normally take photos. You can see my stove, you can see the backsplash, you can see the outlet. That's why all my photos are on eBay right now and it's fine, I'm still selling some stuff. But it's obviously not as good, especially this one right here where you could see the big shadow. And then I came back and I actually did it with the soft box going straight forward. And there's definitely not as much shadow to the side and it looks a little more natural, but honestly, I don't really tell that big of a difference. And I think that all of them will still sell stuff. So I'm gonna go take this outside and see what it looks like. After that, we're gonna come inside and I'll show you exactly my process for going through all my eBay stuff and listing it. And this is the most that I've ever listed by far. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get through it tonight. Never mind, it doesn't work. It's too windy and there's way more shadows. I think what I'm gonna do is put all of the stuff that I need to list on this couch. What I do is I go onto my computer and I create a draft of a listing. That way, I just take all the photos at once. You can also do it by the photos as well, but I prefer to do it the other way first because if I go through the photos, then I have to remember the art number of all of the shoes, whereas if I just make the pre-listings first, I can search for the specific shoe and actually have it all in order just taking photos. So in the middle of getting all this set up and I'm realizing I probably don't have enough space. I mean, I got all of these left. I have all of this left as well. This and this. Jeez, wish me luck, guys. Officially it. This is all the stuff that I have to list on eBay. Two, four, six. 69 listings, and there are a couple that have multiple items, so it's well over 70 items. Wow, I can't wait to get this listed and just realize how much money I've spent on this, and hopefully how much money I'll be able to make. This is very intimidating. First thing that we'll grab are these guys, which I believe are some track and field shoes. So, what I do, and Adidas things is if you look at this tag right here, that is your art number. And so when I go into eBay, I'm gonna enter the art number, B37492. And so it's just gonna come up with similar products in our catalog. So I'm just gonna find the one that's most similar to mine. Mine is a size 12 and a half US. Boom, there it is. Select that. Brand Adidas, style code, eBay product, type. So make sure everything is correct. I hit use that product. Adidas Eddie Zero Long Jump Cloud White Maroon. Sometimes I like to put the MSRP here if I have characters left because then that shows people how much they might be saving off of what the original retail value would have been. Track and field spikes because at the bottom of them, they have spikes and the spikes come with it. So if you see one of these like at a Ross or something and you wanna buy something like this, if they have spikes on the bottom, make sure that you get spikes or that you list it with no spikes, otherwise, you could get in trouble. New without box. So as you can see, it says model added your long jump with spikes, track and field. So if you don't have spikes, then you'd have to take off spikes. And then I also like to add the UK size and the Australia, any sizes that I can, because if people outside of the US wanna buy these shoes, then they obviously can at that point. And eBay has a global shipping program, which gives you as the seller a lot of liability protection is you get the thing to Kentucky, then they're gonna take over from it because they're gonna check it in Kentucky and make sure everything is good. Then they'll ship it out. And if there's any problem shipping it internationally, you don't have to worry about that. Comes with spikes and bike wrench. Then if I can find what the MSRP would be, I can find that here, 37492. So from Adidas is $110 initially. So I can just go MSRP, $110. I've been doing a lot of auction style, but then people will bid and not pay for it. So I'm gonna do all of these fixed price today because you can send something to an auction from a fixed price listing, but you can't go back from a fixed price listing to an auction. No, from an auction to a fixed price listing. I'm gonna put it at $59.99. So I'm gonna let buyers make an offer. I'm automatically gonna accept offers of at least $49 and I'm gonna decline offers of below $40. So if someone sends an offer for $38 and it gets literally declined immediately, they might be like, hmm, maybe if I put it at $40, it'll go through. And so they can send the offer $40 and I can accept it. And then I'm gonna save it as a draft. And now I'm just gonna do that with the other 68 things. So far it's been about 45 minutes and I have 18 drafts. Still have all of this left to go. It's definitely gonna be a few more hours. If I can at least split it up a little bit and take some pictures, that'll make my life easier. All I'm gonna do is go on my phone, grab the shoes. If the sticker is on the bottom of the shoe, I don't take the sticker off. Otherwise I'll take it off and put it inside the laces of the shoe and I'll make sure to keep holding on to the receipts and things because you have 30 days to return stuff. And even after that, most of these stores will actually take it back as an exchange. And since you're gonna be continually going out and buying stuff, you can always exchange it for more inventory later down the road. It's a good trick to have a little bit less risk in these things, but obviously 
I would rather just sell it. All of your drafts are going to be right down here. So all of these ones. Since I put them down in a specific order, that's the last one that I put down. And so it's gonna be the first one here. All I have to do is add the photos. Just go down through my listing, make sure everything looks good. Nothing's changed, price, everything like that. And then I'll list it. It's 8.15 now, so it's been like two hours. A little bit less. I am officially through like 15 or 20 items. All right, we are getting closer, that's for sure. All the stuff here, all the shoes have been cataloged. I got drafts of them. It's also 9.15, so it took a while. And all I have left to do is like some odds and ends, some pesticides, phone cases, backpack, goalie gloves, running vest, hunting thing, that crap, shirts, all of that jazz. As you can tell, I'm really tired. But now I gotta take pictures for all 20 of these listings. But all the listings are done. That's cool. It's a little bit of aftermath. One box, two box, three box, four box. All listed, so now I just have all this left to go. And it's only 1023, not doing too bad. I'm going a little crazy though. Not super looking forward to making this spreadsheet, but that's probably the most exciting thing that I'm gonna do eBay wise, cause I'm such a nerd. So that is actually kind of exciting, but I know it's gonna be really late when I get that done. Update, it's only 11 o'clock and everything is listed. Now I just gotta get pictures. Home stretch. I also haven't eaten anything in this whole time, so that's probably not good. And just like that. Done. Gosh. 11.34. Everything is listed, and now I just have a mess to clean up. Gonna find a way to store all of this, which I don't really know how to do right now, because this is more inventory for eBay than I've ever had before, and then we'll get started on the spreadsheet. So Chris is asleep now. I got everything in the spreadsheet, but I'm gonna explain that tomorrow when I wake up. Everything is pretty much organized now. I got this one box here, which I'm about to throw in these two boxes here, which I made kind of like makeshift lids for, but if you can just believe me, they're both full of shoes. In my normal like reselling area is over here. More eBay stuff there, eBay stuff there, eBay stuff there. And it used to be just one bin, this bin right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get to sleep and catch up with you in the morning. And we'll run through the numbers. So it is the next day. It is not the morning. It's like six o'clock. Then I realized that spreadsheets aren't super interesting. So I'm just gonna give you the basic numbers. So I'm gonna give you the totals that I have listed on eBay for how much money I put into it, how much profit I will potentially make if everything sells at the minimum price, and how much cash flow I will have at the minimum price. So which is basically the money coming back to me. Actually, you don't need that because that's just the inventory plus the profit. So everything that we listed yesterday cost me twelve hundred and seventy dollars and ninety five cents so almost thirteen hundred dollars which is from a couple weeks of sourcing if everything was to sell at the absolute minimum price that i would accept an offer for i would make nine hundred and twenty eight dollars of profit which is a 73.09% profit margin. Overall, with everything that I have listed on eBay right now, I have $1,750 into it. If it all sells, it'll make me a profit of $1,282 for an ROI of 73%. If you wanna see another time that I resold and made a lot of money buying more soccer cleats, check out this video right over here. It's more about risks in your life and your money, but I think you'll like it too. Peace.